Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you what it was like the first time walking through one of the parking lots at one of the gigs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a whole other thing on the outside. It's just separate from what's going on the inside. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, the vendors are out there, the, 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 the drum world's out there, and and I never understood people were holding their hand up for one. I guess that mir- miracle ticket of one. Yeah, looking for a ticket or they want a free ticket, whatever they're yeah, into. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing out there that goes on out there, you know. And then there's some <laughs> folks that come that's never going to get in, but they just want to be where they're gathering. Yep, yeah, they don't even go into the concert. I have no intention unless they get a free yeah, ticket. No intention to go in there. They just want to be where everybody's going to be. <laughs> like, that's the funny thing, but I think it's so great. It's just great to see that kind of loyalty, you know. It just really is. Yeah. So uh, shortly after the tragic losses of Jerry Garcia and John Kahn, you formed JGB to continue the legacy of the music and celebrate the life of Garcia. What was the climate like then compared to now? Do you feel like the demographics and the feelings of the fans have changed at all since uh, from, like, 96 till now? Well, when we, when we, uh, what gave me the, the, the ability and the wisdom to try, even try and do it was when Jerry passed, I think it was about six months, uh, close to a year, John Kahn was going to do some things. And, uh, so John Kahn got someone to represent him and we put a show together at the Palooka Bill in Santa Cruz. I remember very well. And it was going to be called the John Con Band, and so uh, we announced the show, and it sold out so fast, almost like the Jerry thing. They put a second show together. Well, the only difference, what I had a chance to see, is John Con did different styles of music than what Jerry did. It wasn't necessarily songs Jerry did, but it was something Jerry could have done. Right. So, all night long, I'm hearing fans saying, Hey, Melvin, hey, John, you guys want to do Stop That Trip? The same thing they would do with Jerry. They would holler out certain songs from the audience. And I'm listening to them. Now, this is not my band, but I'm listening to them. And John is going straight on with the program that was the song that we rehearsed with him or the type of thing that he wanted to do. And so the first night after going out in the parking lot, speaking of the parking lot, uh, you know, some of the fans called me and said, Hey, Melvin, tomorrow night, are you going to do some of the Jerry tunes? And I said, well, I, I like to think so. I'm not, in, I'm not in charge here, but I think we will. And, of course, we didn't again the second night. And they were calling out certain songs. They wanted to hear the Jerry tunes all night long. So we were going to go on roll with John Kahn. John Kahn band, the exact same members with a few additional members. And then John died within a couple months after Bill's gig. He passed. So I had a chance to see that these fans really wanted to to hear this music. If it wasn't for that, I probably never would have done it. But I had a chance to see that even with Jerry not being on stage and as emotional as it was, they still wanted to hear the music. And that's when he passed. I said, okay, uh, I want to give them what they want to hear. And I I heard them that night, what they were asking for. So that's how I said, well, let's just go out. And it's ironic, I was going to call the band Tribute. And then some of the people I was working with said, no, I'll just call it JGB. You know, you were part of JGB. You won't have to do so much explaining who you are uh, if you just call it JGB. And so we kind of said, okay, if, if uh, legally we can do that, we would do that. And so we found out we could do it. And that's how we got started. Yeah, and that's, that's great that you did that, too, because, I mean, I'm 21. I never had the opportunity to see Jerry. A lot of my friends, I have tons of deadhead friends my age, never got the opportunity. So it's great that uh, you're out there doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're having a great time doing it, too. I, I'm, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. Like I said, I'm, I'm working on the funk project stuff only because, as a musician, if you want to sow your wings, you know, in other areas, that there are a lot of things that I'm capable of doing, and but all my eggs have been put into one basket. So just, just for myself, for, you know, to be able to have fun in another style, in another ram, uh, I, like I said, I'm putting the funk project together. But my life has been now... Garcia band music. Yeah. And that's all pretty much all I do. Is there a particular song that makes you think of Jerry or feel a spirit more so than any other songs? Oh, it's not. I don't think it's so much a song, but when it's the vibe is right that night. There are some nights that's so spooky on stage with some of the guys that I'm working with, and the elements are right, 
uh, the song, the temples are just right, and the fans are receiving it right. Uh, there's a, there's sometimes like, whoa, this is deep. Uh, it, it, you know, I just, I just, I, I flash back on stage with Jerry. You know, when the temples and the keys and the voices and everything are just right, I flash back, and and, and I'm on stage with Jerry. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I, so, I, so I wake back up. Oh, oh, oh this is, okay. We. Just, Okay, I remember what I'm doing here. You know, uh, it has been like that, and, and 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 you know, one of the things with the Jerry Garcia band, they've always called us like when we come to see us, it's like going going to church, because I guess um, the church organ, the, the vibe that I do bring, and the two background singers have that church gospel sound, so they love that spiritual feel about the music. Right. It's not about how, how jam jamming you get as a jam band, but it's that sacred. This, that is put inside these songs that we are able to pull out of those songs. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, sisters and brothers, and now, and now we've gone deeper into Jerry's repertoire. Some of the songs that I didn't even do with Jerry, but he has done them in the Jerry Garcia band. So we've gone back into some I'll Be With Thee, what Donna Jean did with him. Uh, the girls now do I'll Be With Thee, and uh, Magnificent Sanctuary Band, and Ride the Mighty High. Yeah, it's gone a lot deeper into the gospel catalog, uh, and uh, um, I hope it won't be this way always. So we're really bringing out the church vibe now. Oh yeah, that's awesome! I love hearing stuff like uh, "Ride Mighty High" and you just jam and do it for yeah, fifteen absolutely. minutes. <laughs> just build it up, and everybody in the audience is raging. I love listening to those shows. <laughs> and that's what we do. So uh, I want to continue with that, but just I have one more question here before that. Um, could you give uh could you give us a little insight of into Jerry a little bit more? Can you share like one of your more fond moments with Jerry or something funny that people might not know about? Oh, there are lots of funny things. Jerry's just a funny person, period. He always always was taking something and making it into a joke, you know. He's just, just always him and John Kahn was taking things and always making them funny. But what 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 I can tell you that uh Jerry really was, you know, you hear the term, uh, this person would take, give you the shirt off their back. You know, if he thought you needed something, he literally was that kind of guy. Just, I remember once, uh, uh, you know, they always bought the instruments that I, I choose to play. You know, when, I, when something new would come out, I'd say, well, you know, we should look into this. And then Jerry say, go get it from Melvin. And, <laughs> and, and, and it would be the band. So this is one in particular instrument that they... I said, man, I'd like to get that. And they went and got it for me and had it sent to my house. And it was pretty complicated. It was a Kurzweil 2500. Very complicated instrument. And pretty expensive instrument, too. And so, you know, it never, I never brought it out because I never got to the place where I could conquer it. We, we were just working so much, and it was just so complicated that uh, and some other things came out and said, oh, we should get this. And so I remember the, the manager says, well, what, what should we do with this piece that we've got that no one has? And she said, oh, just let him have it. <laughs> Give it to him. I mean, that kind of stuff, you know, is, is what I'm talking about. Not that I asked for it, not that I I, need, I could have probably bought it myself, but that's what I'm saying. Just, oh, well, you know, let him have it. You know, just, just he was that kind of a guy. I know he helped the girls out, and one of the girls was trying to get finances from the house. This is personal. And he helped them. Get, get, it, get into the first house. So he was that kind of guy. Do you feel like, well, uh, I, th I think we know now that today more people are open to the idea of having someone in a band play as Jerry. Uh, with you having Stu Allen and Bob Weir and Phil Lesh have uh, John Katalisic, who you've also played with. Um, now that you're the frontman to JGB, how do you find the right players who are able to like authentically capture the energy that the Jerry Garcia band had in you know, its peak? Well, I, I have to play with them. I have to know who they are, and I have to play with them. There's a lot of guys that have some of Jerry licks. They may play a lick or two, and you hear that. They say, oh, they sound like Jerry. But it's a big difference to play, play all night long on stage and sound like Jerry all night long. And there are some guys that have lived and breathed every aspect of Jerry, such as John, Stu, and there's, there's several others out there that have listened to him exclusively to the point that that now their ideas would be ideas of something Jerry would do. 
Right. You know, you know, just 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 the way they play is they're not trying to copy his lick. They just study him so more so much that now they just kind of play that way. Yeah. And, and those were the authentic guys because one of the things I found out in some of the guys I've had met some guys in the past that they copied his solo. You know, mm. but the moment you have him play something they haven't heard Jerry play, they don't know how to play it because they haven't heard him play it. One of the things that I realized that a lot of guys make the mistake is they, they spend so much time on doing the runs and the riffs that Jerry did is that they forget that Jerry could play rhythm. And so, so like, for instance, when I'm soloing, those guys don't know what to do because Jerry could play, he knew how to back you up and play rhythm, too. And they spend so much time getting uh, those licks that they don't get the rhythm, and then I realize there's nothing back there going on. Yeah, you know, they, they, you know, but the guys that have re- lived and grieved Jerry have all that down, and there's about seven, seven people that I've met so far that say, "Wow, wow," you know, <laughs> the fact that they could, all these people could sit in, sit in that seat and do it quite well. Cool. Well, uh, as we all know, the Deadhead scene remains strong. It's grown day by day because of great bands like Melvin Seals and JGB. Further, Donna Jean Band, uh, the Schwag, who uh, you have the bass player from, correct? Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, Dark Star Orchestra, uh, countless others. I believe the music of Jerry Garcia and, and you and all of his partners in musical exploration have created timeless music. What is your vision of the Deadhead scene 50 years from now? Wow, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't even know if I'll be here 50 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case I am and I'm walking with a cane, I'm still going to be doing Stop That Train and Knocking on Heaven Doors and Catching the Stars and all those wonderful songs. All right, that's it's what, become, that's what I want to hear. Of part of me. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's See, a big part of me now. You have faith in I, our generation continuing the music? I love the generation. They're, they're, a lot, they're a little bit more rowdier than the older ones. The older ones are quiet, but the younger ones, they... They, they they act like the ones in the Canada. They're pretty rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had we act. I was actually in a Grateful Dead tribute band for about seven months last year. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I think I think that uh, we're going to keep it going. Well, I hope they keep come seeing me because I'm going to keep giving it to them. All right, Melvin. Well, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight on the show. It's truly been an honor. Can't wait to see you guys at Penn Speak Thursday. My friends, my uncle will all be there, and we couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much. All right, Melvin, well, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, I'll see you Thursday. All righty. Bye-bye now. Take care.